Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here from QBKing77.com. Time for another check-in video using my iPhone 6 Plus. During the two-week challenge, it says in the last video, Thursday, I will complete the two-week challenge. If I make it that far, who knows, maybe I won't make it. Uh, maybe I'll even uh, stick with the iPhone. We'll see on Thursday. But anyways, today, final check-in video. Um, I'm going to mainly focus on three things, actually. Like I promised last Thursday, I'm going to go ahead and focus on battery life camera and the display so i added the display i said camera life and battery but the display is going to be thrown in there as well i'm going to talk about some other things some things that have just been kind of uh making me a little angry maybe i'm doing something wrong maybe one of you can help me out if you if you know exactly what to do but, but anyways let's go ahead and get into it first of all i want to go ahead and talk about the camera all right so let's take a look at the camera and the camera software so you'll see the iphone has an 8 megapixel camera on the back it's also important to note that the iphone 6 plus has optical image stabilization whereas the iphone 6 does not you'll see it does have an uh, led flash right next to it here um, so it's also important to note that this uh, does stick out just a little bit on the back so as you can see it does protrude a little bit so when you do set the phone down um, it can uh, it tilt a little bit you can, it actually just tilts a little bit back and forth. It's not that big of a deal to me. I really don't care about that. But just wanted to let you know, it does kind of stick out just a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about some of the software features. You can go straight to the camera from the lock screen. You just swipe up and it goes right to the camera application. I do want to note that it opens the camera app very quickly. So if I want to go ahead and log in, of course, fingerprint scanner works very well still. Uh, if I want to swipe that camera application away um, and go ahead and go to the camera app, it opens very quickly. That's one thing I've noticed uh, very fast. Um, and I also want to come out and say it right now. This is one of the best cameras in the market right now on a smartphone, rivaling the Note 4. I always thought the Note 4 was the best, but I think this might actually be a little bit better, uh, if not about the same. So uh, just, just take note that it takes very good pictures. So if you're someone that takes a lot of pictures on your camera, and you want a really good camera, this actually has one. Now again, it's important to note that this is a 6 Plus and it does have optical image stabilization, so that kind of helps with um, low light situations, and low light on this phone is very good. So to give you an idea of low light, I just took a picture actually today, um, and it was low light, it was definitely low light, and the picture turned out better than it looked. Uh, actually, I, I mean brighter, at least lighter. So you'll see, this is actually a low light picture, no flash, nothing like that. It makes it seem like it's sunny out, or there's a bunch of light coming in from the window, but there really wasn't, and you can see that uh, it looks really good. So it takes very good low light pictures. Also, uh, another one I took, I was in a car, and it was nighttime, and it was very dark. Uh, let me go to it, and here we go. So here it is. Um, and it'll look dark, don't worry, trust me, it'll look dark on here, it actually looks pretty good, uh, but um, it was much darker than it appears in this picture. So, and this is with the flash, so to give you an idea, comparison, but this is, I guess, in the in the car when it is dark out, it takes very good low light uh, pictures, obviously optical image stabilization helps that. And then this is it with the flash, so with the flash as well, it's a very bright flash, I don't like taking very, very many pictures with the flash itself. Now just to show off a couple more pictures, Here's a quick one of the, my laptop keyboard that I took. Just showing off some detail. It does very good at get, grabbing detail. Now let's look at some colors. It's just a blanket. Um, and you'll see, I mean, even when I zoom in, the quality is still very good. And then finally, this is a long uh, picture I took, at least a far away picture, just to give you an idea. It also has a bunch of colors in it. Um, so if I wanted to zoom in far, it still looks really good with these far away buildings. Um, just to kind of give you an idea, let's look at this really far away building, zoom in as much as I can. Still very clear. Uh, like I said, the, the camera's fantastic. There's that nice blue sky. Uh, it, it just looks great. Most of the pictures that I take are very good. Now when it comes to the camera application itself, the stock camera application, you don't have too much editing you can do. There are third party camera applications which you can. So if you do like to edit, play around with it, it's good to grab a third party application. But what uh, some features it does have, you do have a square option, which I believe is just more so for maybe Instagram picture taking. A uh, panorama, which I pretty much don't use at all. It works okay. Uh, you can swipe over, go to video. Uh, you don't have an option to change the quality. You shoot in 1080p no matter what. You can change 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second. That's about it. Slow motion, 20, 240 and I don't, and 120. Those are your two options, 240 and 120 frames per second. Kind of cool, uh, need to play around with, but uh, for me, 
I never really needed to use it, but it does work pretty well. It's really cool that they did include it. And then a time lapse video as well that they have. So a bunch of options where you just swipe over. Now let's go to photo. If you tap on this icon, it gives you a really cool look at the different, I guess, uh, edits you can make to it if you want to pick a certain one, if you want a, a different uh, filter on your picture. So, uh, and it gives a good preview of it. You can tap it to go out of it again. You have a timer, you can flip to the front camera. HDR mode, you can turn auto on, off. Same with the flash. Uh, but like I said, it focuses quickly. Uh, it takes a, a good picture, a quality picture. And if you focus and you swipe up and down, you can change the exposure yourself. So you'll see if I want it brighter, if I want it darker, you can do that. Or you just tap away and it'll go back to, I believe, just an automatic setting. and It'll change the exposure on its own. I do want to make a note. I do have a video test using 60 FPS uh, 1080p. I'll link to that in the description if you want to check that out. Now let's go ahead and talk about the battery life. Now it's important to note that I'm using a 6 Plus and not a 6. Uh, because they have different size batteries and I believe battery life is worse on the 6 compared to the 6 Plus. So my experiences are coming from the 6 Plus. All right, now battery life, it has a 2,915 milliamp hour battery, which is still a pretty big battery, especially with a larger design um, and a very thin design as well. It's, I mean, that's a pretty solid battery size. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about it. So now if I go into settings to check, I guess your usage, you go to general and then usage, um, and then you go to battery usage. Uh, today was a little odd because I let it, I left it off the charger all night last night. Um, and you'll see I charged it to 100% three and a half hours ago. And I've usage I believe is like screen on time, two hours and 15 minutes. If I'm wrong about that, please comment, let me know. That's to my knowledge. Uh, but anyways, let's talk about battery life. So uh, this is it. There's no there's no graph like there is an Android or anything like that. But battery life is great. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's better than a Note 4 for me. Not by a lot, but by a little bit. So overall, I would say it's probably the best battery life out of any phone I've used. Um, but I mean, you got to take note with software. I'm sure what's great that with Apple's software is that they optimize it for their hardware. Since they only have this one device, they optimize their software to work very well with the hardware so it runs well, it runs smoothly, and it uh, doesn't take a huge toll on the battery life. Now with Android, I wish Google would do something like that with the Nexus 6. The Nexus 6 battery life is kind of disappointing. They need to optimize their software to work better with their hardware. Now again, to recap, set aside software features. It is a smartphone, so it still does a lot of it just still has a lot of functionality. But battery life is the best I've used. Easily lasts me all day, and I have a little bit extra, which is why I was able to uh, not charge it overnight, and then also use it until it got to about five percent. Then I plugged it in and charged it back up to one hundred percent. I'm also really missing Google Now, uh, especially with it integrated into the operating system. I do miss it. I know Google has their own Google app. It's just not the same, and they do have Siri. Um, I will be doing a comparison of Google Now and Siri after Thursday. I'll do a comparison of the two, asking questions and stuff. But Siri just doesn't give the same amount of information that Google Now does. Siri is, I guess, fun for like more conversational things. So if I wanted to say, hey, how's your day going? I'm pretty good, Tim. See, so I mean, just conversational things. I don't think you can do all of that stuff with Google Now, um, which I mean, some people might like better. Uh, just when it's gathering information in general, I feel like the uh, Google Now actually brings more to the table. And speaking of searching, let's talk about Spotlight Search. Now, Spotlight Search is iOS's universal search, and to get to it, all you really have to do is swipe down anywhere on any of these app icon screens, which is really nice because it's very easy to get to. Um, I'm so used to having a quick widget to get to Google search on my Android devices. So it's nice that there's a little replacement. However, it's kind of been acting a little goofy for me lately. So if I wanted to search something like Super Bowl score, um, let me spell that right. So if I go to Super Bowl score, uh, it'll be it'll bring up news apparently Madden predicts the score correctly it'll, or you can search the web or search Wikipedia. So there's those options. Uh, if I want to go ahead and search something like Blackhawks, so if I search Blackhawks, I hit search, it'll bring up this list. Now, uh, this is kind of important. So you'll see a suggested website, you'll see Wikipedia, you'll see contacts, um, you'll see Bing search, and you'll see search Wikipedia, but it doesn't show search web, which is kind of a pain because I do not like Bing. Bing search is just bad, so if I want to hit more results from Bing, it'll go me, bring me to Bing. I can't hit search web, which brings me to Google search within the Safari browser. Of course, you have to use a Safari browser, so if I wanted to search something like, uh, let's say, office chair, 
Uh, you'll see search web pops up. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why it's always acting so goofy. So if I hit search web, it'll search, go to Safari, it'll go to google.com and search office chair, which is what I want it to do all the time, but it doesn't always show up and it's just a pain. Of course, like I said, you have to use Safari. You can't change it to Chrome, the default. Uh, so that's just that's just your your spotlight search and it's just kind of a pain for me. Now I'm still really missing the back button. I know I touched on it in a previous video, but that's something I feel like Apple really needs to integrate into their iPhones as a back button or some way to just go back. There's certain situ situations where you really need a back button and it's just not possible, especially with larger screens, not having to go ahead and go in the upper left hand corner to tap the back arrows. And one more thing I've really been missing is notification icons. Uh, personally, I get notifications from a bunch of different apps, which I'm sure you do as well, including email, text messaging, Hangouts, uh, Snapchat. I mean, just various apps just give me notifications. Instagram, Twitter, I mean, just so many that I get a lot. Um, so it's like I can't tell which app has notifications without pulling down the notification bar. So I'm really missing that. And also something else that's kind of been getting on my nerves is the notification system. Not necessarily the live notification system when you're in an app and a notification pops down. I kind of like that. So not that one, just the one where you have a notification pull down bar and no, no notification icons. All right, but like I said, notifications. If I pull this down, of course you have today and notifications, which is more of your widgets and such. If I go to notifications, here's all my notifications. Here's why it's kind of been getting on my nerves. First of all, I've read all of these messages and replied to all of them in the Hangouts app and they didn't go away. I don't know if that's app developer related or not, but they did not go away. They should. I've already read all of these. I mean, you can close out all of them. Also, they're not grouped together very well. They're all separate. They take up a lot of space. So if you want to clear them, you can. Um, and, and you'll see all of these emails as well. I've seen some of them, so they shouldn't be showing up there anymore. Uh, and you'll see they're all separate. They aren't grouped into one, uh, I guess, quick preview where maybe you can expand it like they do on Android, which I think Android has done a better job with the notification pull-down bar, uh, especially just because this takes up a lot of space. And and there's no icons either, so it's not like I, I really have to pull down the bar to actually see them. Now, I also want to talk about something that I haven't talked about yet is multitasking. So you double press the home button, and here it is. So you can swipe through. Uh, you do have your recents up there, but if you want to go quickly between apps, if I want to go to Twitter real quick, I can. Um, you'll see the load it back up. It closed out of it because I hadn't used it in a long time. So if I go back to this, I was playing this game earlier. As you can see, loads it up, and it's very smooth, actually. Uh, multitasking works well. Uh, if I want to open up the camera application, I can. You can press those icons down here. If you swipe through up here, it goes kind of slow, but if you want to go quickly, you can swipe very quickly with these icons down here, and you can tap the icon as well. So uh, I really like their, I guess, overall theme of their, um, I guess, their quick setting, I mean, their quick multitasking options, um, and, it, and it's smooth, and it works well. Now finally, let's go ahead and talk about the display. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you some close looks at some different colors, maybe check out a video. Uh, so let's check out the display. All right, let's check out the iPhone 6 Plus's display. Uh, it is a 1080p display, 401 pixels per inch on a 5.5 inch display. And overall, uh, I would say my experience is very good with the screen. It does rival other Android flagship devices. It does have a large screen, it does take a little bit to get used to, of course, the phablet style device. But going through, maybe looking at a couple other wallpapers with other colors, colors do pop. I mean, outside, looking outside, it, it looks very, very great, honestly. Just uh, the colors pop. I mean, viewing angles are great. Uh, like I said, it rivals other flagship screens. I, I mean, you do have a Retina HD display. So nothing really too bad to say about the display in general. Now here's me just playing a quick game. Uh, if you want to see what it looks like with other colors, movement, etc. I'm not going to show you a video, but I figured this game, it's called the Earn to Die. I've actually been playing it a decent amount. It's pretty fun. I, it was free for me. I don't know. I think it was just a sale. I don't know if it actually costs money or not, but it's just a quick game on the display. All right, but that's it. So that would be my thoughts on the iPhone before my final review. So if you haven't seen them, check out my other iPhone videos. I'll post a link to the playlist in the description if you want to check them out. Uh, give me some thoughts and also be sure to suggest things you want to see in the final review, whether it be hardware related, software related, etc. Um, and like I said, after that final review, I'll do some comparisons. Might review Lollipop versus iOS and also Siri versus Google. Siri versus Google, not for sure. Lollipop versus iOS probably as well. So uh, stay tuned for those. Be sure to subscribe to me. Click that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. You can also click that like button. that helped me out. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. I'll link some in the description of the video below. And as always, guys, thank you for watching.